In this video, we'll talk about the eight-point grid system and how it helps you as a designer to stay consistent and structured with your designs with almost no effort. Now, as always, let's jump straight in. Okay, everyone, so we're in Figma and we'll start by talking about what the eight-point or four-point grid system is and why we use it. So let's zoom in here. First of all, what is it? It is very simple. Once again, like I always say in my tutorials, but it really is very simple. The eight point or four point grid system is basically just you as a designer adhering to heights, widths, sizes that are divisible by eight or four in most cases. And we'll get to some cases where you don't want to do it. So that means that you'll use pixel sizes like four, eight, 12, 16, 24, 32, 40, 48, all the way up to whatever number you feel is needed for your designs. And what this does for you, it just creates consistency. So it eliminates randomness and creates consistency. So you can be sure that your designs are all gonna look very consistent because you have a consistent sizing system. You don't have to worry that, oh, wait a second, did I use 52 here and 47 there and then, 31 here? No. You know that maybe for most buttons, I'm using 40, 48, and 64. For most paddings, it's 32 or 24. It's much easier to stay consistent and eliminate randomness. And the second thing and the last thing for why we use it is for communication. So if you're working with developers, you're working with designers in your design files, knowing that we just need to remember the numbers four and eight is gonna help a lot. So if a developer sees in your design file that, wait a second, this is 51 pixels and we're using numbers divisible by four and eight, something is wrong here. Then they might address that and come back to you and talk to you about it. The same with designers, they're gonna see that something is wrong here. And they're also gonna know that when we're designing our paddings, it's not gonna be some random number, I know that it's either 24 or 32. And it reduces the amount of choices you have and the amount of possibilities for error. So great for communication. Now, when do we use four versus eight? And it all depends on what level of precision you need. It's all it is really. So when you're creating dashboards, when you're creating designs where you're handling smaller things, so in this case, for example, we have a link and this link has a small little icon attached to it. And if we click into this, we can see that the distance between the link and the icon is four. Now, if I increase this to eight, you can see that they feel a bit separate. So in this case, we might want to use four. Then this feels like something that is put together. It's all part of the same link component. In other cases like this, where you have a card that has a distance to the next item here, the subheading, we might not need to worry about having these small, small sizes. Here we could just go for something like 64, for example. So it all depends on the level of precision you need. Now, do we use it everywhere? The answer is yes, almost. We use it for things like paddings and margins. So. Here, once again, we have the card. We can see that the padding, which is the distance between items within a container to its bounding box, is 32. We can see that the margins, which is just the distance between items, here is eight. So within containers like this for paddings and margins. Also, when it comes to elements like buttons or inputs. So we can see that both these elements so the button and the input has a height of 40 pixels. You can also see that it has padding to the sides of 16 pixels. You can see that the vertical padding though is 10. And that's because we've set the height to be 40 pixels. So that's the master in this case. Then we have icons. Icons also adhere to the eight point or four point grid system. So this one is 96 pixels in height and width, but there are places where we don't use it like for container widths. So when it comes to web development and design, we're creating things within containers. And the biggest container, the master container of them all, the container for your whole page, is usually based on a number. 
So 1140 pixels, for example, is a very common container width. With that, we have a column system that we adhere to. So column systems are based on containers and the width of the content within will be dynamic. Now, when it comes to columns, I have a video on that. You can check it here where I go into detail about these things, but just know that the widths for your things. So for example, let's look at the card here again. So this card, when we shrink it, needs to be dynamic. It needs to follow how the page kind of shrinks. Now that makes it impossible for us to use an eight point or four point grid system because then we set this fixed number and that's not gonna work. So if we look at this width here, it's 350.5, which is not divisible by four or eight. If we would then use the eight or four point grid to create the width or to set the width of this card layout, then you can see how it breaks our column layout, which is not what we want when it comes to web development. This also is true for most container heights. So if we look at this once again, like I showed you before, we have margins that adhere to this eight point or four point grid system. And we have paddings that also adheres to it. The result of this is of course that the full height of this card is not necessarily gonna adhere to the eight point or four point grid. In this case, it's 195 which means that it's not divisible by four or eight. And that's okay, because we're focusing on having the margins and the paddings as the masters here. And last but not least, when do we break the rules? First of all, we should aim to not do it, but sometimes you might need to. One case where I usually end up being in this situation where I might need to break the rules is when I'm handling small text sizes with icons. So in this example here, we have a four pixel spacing, we have a six pixel spacing, and we have an eight pixel spacing. The four pixel spacing seems a bit tight, and the eight pixel one seems a bit too separated. And the six pixel feels like just the right kind of balance. But once again, even though like this looks a bit better, if we can change the size of the icon or do anything else than actually breaking our pattern of eight pixels or four pixels, that's the best way to go because in the end, more simplicity equals a happy design life. The system is there to help you stay consistent. So the more we can adhere to it, the better. If you want even more context, check out this more detailed video on columns and grids. And if you feel like it, a sub, a comment, a like really helps. Now, until the next one, have a great life and we'll talk soon. Ciao.